So iSentry is an artificial intelligence based video analysis solution. We detect and qualify unusual behavior and moving threats. And the last but almost not least thing is we do this in real time. Now, perhaps for you guys, one of the most important things is that we are natively integrated into the Milestone Expertech solution, ensuring, and this is very important, a unified platform and to end user experience. How this actually looks in the smart client, so you get an idea for how it's integrated. All right, so first up here is just an example of uh, the blurring. So the blurring is a plugin that runs in the smart client, so it's available in live and in playback. And we can pre configure views. So the administrator could set up views. And in these views, right, the operators are only allowed to see certain cameras. So those can be pre set up, right? And in that way, we have control over what the um, what the operator is allowed to see, which views they're allowed to see, which cameras they're allowed to see, etc. etc. And because we only blur uh, what is displayed on the screen, the hardware requirement isn't severe. Um, and a point I think, Alberto, that we missed to make earlier was that when it comes to, for example, the Husky that we tested, right? Um, what is very interesting is that that Husky 350T does not have a discrete GPU in it, right? That actually has Intel OpenVINO integrated on the CPU. All right. And that's really important because we all know that discrete GPUs are extremely expensive and this is a huge cost saving to be able to run this, you know, on the embedded uh, CPU, basically free because you, you buy the CPU and, 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 you know, it's already there. You saw the face blurring. We can also do body blurring. Yes. Specifically for healthcare applications, we can blur the whole body. And this is being very useful in some tests that we're conducting, in fact, with you guys. Uh, and the healthcare department uh, or division that you're looking at some analytics. We're trying to, we're, we're, we are capable of blurring the whole body as well. I'm going to run through these alerts quite quickly. As I said, Alberto has already shown you some nice examples, but here we want to just show you how it looks. So I've, this is the iSentry tab, and we have uh, several options here. We just have a list of cameras here um, that I'm grouping by camera so, we can, so I can more easily show you the alerts. Um, and I'm going to start with unusual behavior. Now, I don't have hugely fancy unusual behavior examples, but I have a few that I think would be interesting to show. So the first one I want to show you, let's say, is this one. So you will first notice that all these alerts are marked in red, all right? This means we have a rule, and the rule prioritizes the alert as a high priority. Why? In this case, we have a rule that says, if we detect a person wearing a motorcycle helmet, then that should be a high priority alert. Now, unusual behavior is, is pretty interesting in the sense that it will pick up very, very regularly if a person carries something, but also when they have like an unusual head like this. And then the, the object classification will, of course, allow us to classify the helmet, as you can see in that image, helmet 72%. All right. So while we're here, um, we have these classified frames available for viewing. We can also uh, add a flag or a comment in here if we like. Uh, we can export the images, the original high quality images. These can be compressed. You can see that we had immediate video playback on the left here, which is all standard milestone uh, functionality. We also have a the ability to switch to live video. So if we have an event that is cur currently happening, because remember these alerts come in in near real time. So you we will get an alert coming in and, and that's as it happens, all right? Of course, these are loop videos, so this is why you see it over and over. Um, and then what the operator has, we've got lots of ability to configure this, but the operator would typically have a range of buttons that are configurable, which they could dismiss. And of course, all their categories here can be configured and they can add a note 
of why it was dismissed, so why it was not important. Or indeed, if we want to escalate to, to an alarm, we could say suspicious person, alert or keep watch. And we could say, you know, I don't know, a helmet uh, detected, for example, uh, and we could send this as an alarm, right? What you would notice is that will pop up in the alarm manager immediately as an alarm integrated into milestone, right? So that's the helmet example. Let's go to the next one. So let's look at this one. So here we have unusual behavior, and this is a very typical uh, use case once again. Uh, you will see that this guy is falling. Well, it's not really falling. That's gently lying down, but <clears throat> you can't blame him because really falling hurts. Um, but that is an example of unusual behavior. And we have the same. We have the, the, the um, frames here with the classifications that tells us that it is a human that's involved in this action. And of course, everything is available uh, to the operator. All right. The next one, I'm going to show you another example of falling just because it's interesting. Let's show you this one. So here we have also a person on a bicycle falling. And that's a typical unusual behavior once again. So this is just some examples of interesting, unusual behavior. You can imagine that, for example, as Alberto said, uh, healthcare or even retail, wherever you would care that someone gets hurt, falling is a useful thing to know. But it also talks to, you know, one of those things that we've got no rule set up here for UB to detect falling. Unusual behavior does this all by itself because it learns what this what is typical in a scene and then alerts what is not standard or usual. All right. Now, an interesting one here is going to be this one. So you will see there that we have a little red box, which is the indicator that indicates the the source of the alert on that box there. So if I play the video, you will see we have a little indicator there, the same as there. If I click on placement and I go back, you will see here's the guy placing the uh, garbage we said, we said dumping in this case. But what's interesting, and Alberto alluded to this, is that we use this analytic in, X, in, in a huge variety of cases, our, our deep learning here. So in other words, imagine we have a use case where there's a vault. The vault is, can only be opened for, I don't know, a certain amount of time and there must be at least uh, two or more people in the room when this happens. That's the sort of scenario that we can do using a combination of our left object analytic plus our deep learning uh, plus the rules, right? So we can be very precise about how we apply these, all right? And um, things like, uh, let's say, uh, parking in a no parking zone is a very simple use case for us because we can classify a vehicle as there. Vehicle is the source of the alert. Vehicle has been parked there for 30 minutes, whatever the case is. So left object is a very interesting one. And well, in, in this case, it says waste being dumped on the side street. We have plenty of requests yes. uh, for this sort of detection in, in, in many different situations. All right, now I'm going to jump to tricks. All right, so tricks is an interesting one because we can apply it also from short range to long range, and we have a lot of breadth in terms of our capa uh, capability there. So I'm going to start with this one, and, and Alberto showed this one already, uh, in, but it's such a good video that we always want to demo it just to show. So I've set up two rules here for our ATM scenario. The one was if a person loiters for more than 30 seconds, right, but it's only a single person, then I make a medium priority alert. So that's the orange that you see there, right? Medium priority. However, if some, if, if two people loiter in front of an ATM for more than 30 seconds, then that becomes a high priority, right? So the operator would see the prioritization there, as you can see. And in this case, we have two people that have been loitering for more than 30 seconds in front of a specific ATM, right? And this is the, the rule. So it, it demonstrates two things. Firstly, the fact that we can set second precise loiter times on our TREX analytic. This is short distance. This is TREX light, essentially. Um, but we can also then on top of that configure very complex rules, right? So we know that there is at least two people in this scene, all right? Or, or not just in the scene, but in front of that ATM specifically, because there could be people on the sides, right? And we don't care about them. Or pers one person at the one ATM and another in the other, and that would also not 
you know, let's say, uh, satisfy the use case. So this is a very good example of how we can satisfy a use case we never came across before this was requested from us. Okay, so that is our uh, ATM one. So let's go to the next one. So the next video here, and I'm going to show this to you twice. I'll be brief about this. High priority person detected is the rule that's applied here. And there you can see this is a 100 meter perimeter thermal camera person classified. So really useful um, in terms of, of, of having this as intrusion detection or perimeter protection, right? Um, very easy use case for us. So I'm not going to go on. I'll show you a minute uh, in a minute also the forensic search on this video. Then let's go to the next one, which would be OK, residential. So let me show you guys here. So here as well, we have I've set up a rule that said if we detect a person, it should be high priority. But if we don't, we don't want to dismiss it. We still want to put it in front of an operator to double check because at night, we might not be able to classify a person. So I'll show you the use case. If I click on this, you can see there in the distance we're picking up something, right? But it's not necessarily clear what that is, right? But if you start playing the video, right? And there we're detecting the person. And this is Trex Light, mind you. So this is our, our lowest tier um, Trex analytic. And sort of when the person arrives here, you can see, oh, yeah, yeah it's actually a human being that uh, grabbed something from a from one of these houses. Now, the point is, is here we're protecting only the sidewalk and uh, we're not, we're ignoring the road, let's say, so that we don't get false positives, right? Um, and as you can see, we picked up this alert nicely, but in, in a follow-up, we'll detect this twice because we track the guy walking up and then that would be one alert and we did classify him. And then as we classify him, we then create a high priority alert. OK, so this is a, a very useful demonstration of rules and tricks working together. All right, so that would be uh, tricks. Then let's see. Um, the next one I want to show you guys is the long range. So this is also very typical and, and we've shown you some of this before. And this is actually not far enough. Let's see if we can get one that's nice and far. So there you can see we have an alert that car is about 700 meters away. Now, mind that this is a standard thermal camera. So this is a 35 millimeter lens, if I remember correctly, 352 by 288 resolution thermal, native resolution thermal camera. So this is a standard um, thermal camera, not massively expensive or fancy normal fixed camera. And that's 700 meters. We can go beyond 700 meter detection, of course. But you can see now that guy there, we are not detecting because he's outside of our detection zone. Our detection zone excludes the panels themselves. So we have a, a detection zone here. So if as that person walks back into the detection zone, you can see we pick him up immediately. So there we have our two individuals walking around. No problem at all. We can't classify at this distance, obviously, because there's just not enough pixel data there. But as they come closer, this becomes better and better and easier as we move forward. Right. So that would be that. Then I have one video I want to show you guys, but this is has no value from an alerting point of view, just to demonstrate our private uh, personal protection equipment. So this is a stock video, as you can see. The reason we use this video or we've added this video is really so that you guys can see very clearly. We've got a hard hat, safety glasses, high visibility. Um, of course, this model is trained on, on, on CCTV angles, so it wasn't trained on an angle like this because no CCTV camera is mounted in this way, but this is the clearest way um, to be able to demonstrate it, which is why I have it on here. All right, so that is that. So if I now go to our alert search, I'll be very brief. Um, I want to show you, and, and Albert has already shown this. So if I go to da, da 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 parameter one, and I can say I want, for example, just uh, when if there was a person in that area, for example, that would be the use case. I can say uh, give me a person, person, and I can adjust all sorts of things here if I want to. <clears throat> Excuse me, and um, that's it. Search. Period. Yeah, it's for today. It's okay. by default for today, so that's fine. And then you will see all the cases where we picked up a person in that area. Person detected, perfect. And mind, this is a 100 meter fence line, so it is it is a reasonable distance. Now that's it, as simple as that. Um, but anyway, I'll show you guys anyway. So if counting, <laughs> special counting applications, 
Um, and I'll show you this very quickly. So this is basic entrance exit counting top down, but then we have GPU enabled counting, which adds some excitement and interest to this. So if I go to this, um, this is specific customer request, right? So what we have here is different bus operators and the different bus operators have different colored buses. So the request was let's count the buses. So the vehicle types, you can see we count cars, motorbikes, are different types of vehicle, but also then colors. So we know those were the colors of different buses and the numbers, the numbers don't make sense. It's a recorded video, but the point is, is we have the numbers here per color. So we can with good accuracy, say which operators did what volume in a day, for example, right in a report. So this is just an interesting application of a combination of our counting and